You're watching CITV with Jamie Moyer, left-handed pitcher of the Philadelphia Phillies. Plymouth White Marsh High School has a strong tradition of highly competitive and champion sports teams. Through CITV Sports, you'll witness PW's outstanding student athletes in action. However, there are many more games each week than what CITV is able to cover. So come out to PW, see the games live, and cheer for our teams from the stands. If you are a senior citizen with a gold card, you can even attend all of our regular season home games for free. Good luck to the competitors, and go Colonials! We're so glad you're with us for this 
edition of CITV Sports. Once again, this is 2011 Plymouth White Marsh alumnus Scott Samuel David Weiss. Again, the scene, Victory Fields in White Marsh, Pennsylvania for Suburban One American Field Hockey between the Quakertown Panthers of Quakertown, Pennsylvania and the Plymouth White Marsh Lady Colonials of Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania. It's senior night for Plymouth White Marsh, so we're under the lights. Quakertown comes into this contest Three and eleven overall, three and fourteen overall, two and eleven suburban one American. PW in the meantime, fifteen one and one overall, thirteen zero zero in the conference. PW has already clinched the conference title for the fourth straight season and it will become official after this game because this is the final regular season game for the Lady Colonials before the postseason. PW is coached by Sharice Haltman in his, her first season at the helm after many years with Marianne Paparum guiding PW. We're coming into this October 18, 2016 matchup, the Lady Colonials currently ranked seventh in the District 1 in 3A standings. The top 24 make the playoffs and the top eight get first round buys into the second round. And PW, with a win tonight, will most likely not have to play until, we'll leave October 26. And we're underway here at the Victory Fields, 30 minute halves. If this game goes into overtime, I believe I believe it will be 15 minutes, and if no one scores, then it would be a tie. Right. And there's Frankie O'Brien, you know, from 31 for the Lady Colonials, well, one of the seniors. <laughs> and these two teams last faced each other on September 23rd, 2016. PW won 9-0. Kennedy Reardon read the lay with three goals and an assist. O'Brien had two goals and two assists. Jess Dixon had two goals. Corinne Bechtel had a score, Sam Vera had a goal and an assist, and goalkeeper Catherine Hofton had four saves. PW with possession. That's out of play. Should be PW ball, and with it now is Kennedy Reardon. Reardon has a few games this season with multiple goals, and it looks like it will go the other way. Actually, it'll be PW ball. So it's Quaker Town zero, Plymouth Whitemar zero, with 28:43 to go in the first half. Final regular season game. Now we go inside, blocked by the cage, and it will go the other way. These two teams used to face each other as members of Suburban One American, but haven't been in the same conference since 2007-2008. The following eight school years, Quakertown had been a member of Suburban One Continental, and during that time, they have faced each other, I believe, eight times, and Quakertown won four, lost two, and tied twice. So Quakertown, during those eight years, 2008 to 2015, won two more games than the Lady Colonials as they tied twice. And that one just missed the cage. It will be Quakertown ball. It's been a rough season for the Panthers. Just 20 goals and have allowed 53 and have been shut out 10 times. Here's an opportunity that can't be capitalized as Mackenzie Hatfield in the form of 33 and blue for the Panthers had taken it away and it will go back to the Panthers. Quaker Town has defeated PW since September 4th, 2015. By the free, puts it through. Oh, just misses. Second effort, missed again. 27 minutes to go in the first half. We're still scoreless. PW has won 24 straight games in Suburban One American play, dating back to September 16, 2015, which was a 4 0 loss at Wissahickon. And it will be our first penalty corner of the contest. Keep an eye out for Frankie O'Brien, who I believe has 25 goals this season. That's a lot for a defender. 
And I believe she has scored in 13 straight contests in 14 of the 17 games overall. And PW, I believe, is 12-1-1 one one in those contests. Let's go, Frankie. Here's O'Brien. She takes the shot, and it is deflected. Corinne hey. Bechtel. And it will go the other way. So 26-11 to go in the first half. It's Quakertown 0, PW 0. Quakertown in blue, PW in white. PW's last home loss was October 22nd, 2015. It was the regular season finale. Back then, it was a 5-2 defeat to Haverford High. It was 3-0 Fords at the half. And PW's only loss in 2016 had been at Haverford on October 4th. PW lost that one three to one, led one to zero, and O'Brien accounted for the only score. Now the Panthers control, but it is batted back. Lady Colonials with the possession, Karen Bechtel. She's going inside. Puts it through, boom, shaka laka. Yeah, a good score for Corinne Bechtel, and it's one to zero. Plymouth White Marsh with 25 10 remaining in the first half, and that forces a Quaker Town timeout. Another beautiful play by one of the seniors, Corinne Bechtel, to put the Lady Colonials up in the first five minutes in this contest. Not only is this senior night, but it is a part of homecoming week from October 17th to October 22nd, which is the Saturday. And it's also getting closer to playoffs for all sports. In fact, PW Girls Volleyball, one heck of a year entering tonight. PW is 21 and 0 in volleyball, 17 and 0 in Ceremony One Continental. I'd like to congratulate Coach Silly Byler and her squad for for capturing the Continental title outright. It's PW's first conference title in girls volleyball since 1999. Way to go! And PW has a chance in that sport to finish undefeated in the regular season. With one more match it will be a tough one. I believe it's on October 19th against Hatboro Horsham. If PW wins that one, it will be an undefeated regular season as the Lady Colonial Volleyball team currently like third in the District 1 4A standings. Good enough for our first round by still. As for the girls field hockey playoffs, the top eight right now are Unionville, Conestoga, Downtown West, Refactin, Central Bucks East, Central Bucks West, PW, and Council Rock South. PW is ahead of Council Rock South by about 0 .038 points. And again, the top eight field hockey teams get first round buys into the 3A District 1 playoffs set to begin on October 24th. But the top eight wouldn't have to play until October 26th. So it's an important game for PW and Quakertown right now. I believe it's 35th out of 38 teams who is playing to wait for next year. Now, the timeout is over. It's 1-0 PW, thanks to the Corinne Bechtel goal. As we have 25 minutes to go in the first half. So that's a solid, good start for the Lady Colonials. PW scores early and often, entering this game 77 goals for, 11 goals against. They have won 10 games via shutout. Kennedy Reardon puts it inside, and that will go outside. As that was Amanda Colton in uniform two with the opportunity, I believe. Frankie O'Brien puts a rip in. That is blocked. Second effort now. Sam Sparrow. And I believe it'll be another penalty corner. So 24 15 remaining in the first half. Plymouth Waymarsh 1, Quaker Town 0. 
UPW has not been to a second round playoff game since 2013. There's O'Brien. One on one. Sophie Kolka also there and turns the ball over. 23.50 to go in the first half, 1-0 PW. OPW has been to the playoffs 18 in the last 20 seasons, the exceptions, 2009 and 2012. Back in 2009, these two teams faced off each other in the regular season opener. I believe it was on September 4th, 2009, and Quakertown won that one in overtime, two to one, thanks to a just Camber goal, and that game was recorded on CITV. Now an opportunity for Brianna Nadal, uniform seven in blue, for the Panthers. And that one is taken by Kendi Reardon. These two teams are separated by 31 miles. Panthers are about 17 miles away from Dorney Park and Wildwater Kingdom in Allentown, while the Lady Colonials would have to go about 44 miles to the amusement and water park. And that one will be flipped. Past midfield, great goal by Frankie O'Brien. Sam Sparrow is on her own and is blocked. Sparrow again, misses the whack and it will go to the Panthers. 1-0 PW, 22-30 to go in the first half thanks to the Karen Bechtel goal. Thanks to Bechtel's goal, PW has scored in now 33 straight games. They had not been shut out since September 16th, 2015. There was a 4-0 loss at Wissahickon the last time PW lost in conference play as well. Sam Sparrow, another attack, puts it and hits the side of the cage. Quicker town possession. 21-53 remaining, PW still up one. So in the final non-conference meeting between these two teams, back on September 4, 2015, Quakertown won five to three. The Panthers had three goals in the first 15 minutes and led five to one until the final eight of the contest. Now the Panthers looking to get past midfield and the referee signals the other way. So the 2016-17 school year, Quakertown and Hapro Horsham have joined Suburban One American, while Norristown and Upper Marion have left for the Pioneer Athletic Conference. And that one will be Quakertown possession. Again, this is homecoming week. So on October 21st, 2016, we prepare to bring you Football between Cheltenham and Plymouth White Marsh. PW in football, I believe, is five and zero in the conference. If PW beats Cheltenham, the Colonials would win at least a share of the Suburban One American football title, the first conference title in football since 2013. O'Brien puts it through. Oh, no good. Did not position herself properly, but that was a great effort. Still 1-0 with 2020 to go in the first half. Here under the lights, it's October 18, 2016. This is certainly not the last game of the season for PW. And now it's intercepted by the Lady Colonials. Looks like Corinne Bechtel. And that one looks like to be confiscated by Sydney Fundle. But back inside, blocked. Sam Sparrow also inside. Bechtel, that one's gonna go outside. PW possession. 1938 to go in the first half, 1-0 Lady Colonials. PW has already clinched the Suburban One American title, go, go, it's fourth go. straight conference crown. Many years, the conference had been dominated by Wissahick, and that one's gonna go through. Is it gonna be pushed away? It will. Kennedy Reardon pushes it out of play. 
But the ball now is uniform 18. What looks like? And that is intercepted. Sophie Coca. But it's going to be a run to the races for Bechtel, and she won't get there in time, but it'll be quicker town possession. A nice effort, but not good enough. 18.30 remaining in the first half. 1-0, Plymouth White March. PW wins this game. They would have gone an entire regular season without a loss at home. Here's the opportunity, it is blocked. Sam Sparrow takes a whack, goes to the side of the cage, out of play, Quaker Town possession. So now Quaker Town with the ball. Quaker Town, three wins this year have come against Palisades, two to zero on September 12th, September 15th, four one against Cheltenham, and on October 6th, nine zero against Cheltenham. In fact. The Panthers have played three games since that last win and have been shut out in all of them and have been outscored 10-0 to zero in those contests. So it's been a rut for the Panthers struggling in, in the new conference for them and that is taken away now by the Lady Colonials. Corinne Bechtel doesn't get to it, Sam Sparrow does. She's on the attack. Come on, Michelle, right away. Keep wide a little, Ken. An opportunity is pushed aside out of play. Should be quicker time possession. 16.50 remaining in the first half. 1-0 Plymouth Weimars. One thing I know, this is 2011 Plymouth Weimars alumnus, Scott Samuel David Weiss. Great having you with us on homecoming week and senior night. And Quaker Town in blue, PW in white. Not waiting on the sidelines for PW are Julia Fiddler and Gia Schweitzer. Jess Dixon cannot get up to it. Also, Kennedy Reardon going after it. That one's going to be pushed out of play. Should be PW ball with 16 13 to go in the first half. Sophie Kolka, Kennedy Reardon. Here comes Reardon. Reardon takes a shot. It goes out of play. She was getting covered by Julia Ely. 15.48 remaining in the first half. Still 1-0 PW thanks to the Corinne Bechtel goal less than five minutes in. Out of play, PW possession. And PW looking to get a first round bye in the 2014 <laughs> Mr. Glenn 3A playoffs. Top, only the top eight get buys. 24 teams get in total. Polka, there's a Brian. Come on, Frankie! Let's go, Frankie. There's a Brian. She takes a shot. And it just misses. And that will belong to the Panthers. <laughs> Again, we believe O'Brien has scored in 13 straight games. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Mackenzie Hadfield now with the ball. But that is intercepted. Back door. Just Dixon, and it pushes it just a bit wide. Left. So Quaker Town will do it again. Julia Illy gives it now. And Mackenzie Hadfield. Hadfield with the pass. Quaker Town has not had an offensive chance yet. It's Emma Trong. Uniform 10. Pushes it aside. 
strong. Looks like Coca. Look back to the Panthers and O'Brien shortly intercepts and will go to the Lady Colonials. Great defense again by Frankie O'Brien. 13.51 remaining on, in the Sam. first half. 1-0 BW, Sam Sparrow on the attack again. Jess Dixon's inside as well. That one is blocked. And I believe it will belong to the Lady Colonials. So a free opportunity for the Lady Colonials. Kennedy Reardon. Reardon goes inside and Bechtel misses the chance. Oh, so close for having a second goal in the contest. It's still 1-0 PW with 13-18 to go in the first half. Again, PW averaging four and a half goals per contest and have allowed just 11 all season. That's under one goal per game allowed. And again, PW's lone loss was on October 4th at Hereford High, three to one. O'Brien, she's inside. Now, Stoke, now! I'm sure, I'm sure one of Let's go, Frankie. And that one is pushed aside again. And it looks like a corner. It looks like the Panthers will have the goalkeeper <coughs> and four Let's other Panthers in the cage. Look out for O'Brien again. Come on, Frankie. Here's O'Brien. O'Brien does it again. She'll take it. Yes. Boom, yes. Shaka Laka. Frankie O'Brien scores, and it's 2 0 Lady Colonials with 12.15 to go in the first half. That is believed to be her 26th of the season yes. okay. and has now scored in what we believe 14 consecutive games. That's the way to go on senior night. A nice effort by. Kennedy Reardon with the assist. And it's now 2-0. Boy, O'Brien is dangerous from outside. But she wasn't that far outside, and that will now go to the Panthers. So we believe Bechtel and O'Brien have the goals. And that one will be pushed out of play. So far, no shots. No corner, nothing on offense going so far for the Panthers. 11.37 to go in the first half, PW up two to zero. PW has had two games with double digit goals. Ailey had a possession and she'll regain it. Ailey of the Panthers. That is blocked by Coca back to Quakertown. Intercepted by the Lady Colonials. It's Gia Schweitzer. And the form eight had it. Back to Schweitzer. One against two. Misses. It's another effort. And that one will not count. Because you have to be in a certain area to score. So Quaker Town ball with 10 46 to go in the first half. Now, another opportunity for the Lady Colonials. Here's Jess Dixon. Dixon spins back, goes forward, just on the side of the cage. Quakertown will get it back. Under 10 and a half to go in the first half. It's 2-0, Plymouth Whitewash. Cherise Haltman, again, first year coach for the Lady Colonials. Has been a great four years with the squad. So if Coco misses it, and it will go back to the Lady Panthers. So in 2013, PW was 17-1 in the regular season and unbeaten in the conference. Goes to the cage, puts it through. Boom, shaka laka. 3-0, Plymouth White March. Sammy Sparrow. With a nice feed. And it's now 3 0, Lady Colonials. Um, no, it was number six. 
And I believe it was Julia Fiddler with the tally. And it's now 3-0 Puebla for White Marsh. So, with under 10 minutes to play, PW already out to a 3-0 advantage. And most likely won't be done there. Nice crowd here at Victory Field on this October 18th, 2016. And now another opportunity inside. But because I was outside possession, no goal. Quaker Town possession. So 24 teams get in the District 1 through a playoffs. <coughs> Wissahickon right now is currently 24th. And behind Wissahickon in 25th is Boyertown. They have about a .5 difference in power rankings. And that will go the other way. Looks like Michelle McGrath had the opportunity. Uniform 23 for Plummet Play Marsh. Rihanna Nadell. Uniform 7. But so that's going to be turned away. But back to the Panthers. Ely has control. Eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. PW3, Quaker Town 0. And that will go back to the Lady Colonials. And right now, Quaker Town not getting any offense. Got to be careful. There's a possibility of an 11th time being shut out. And O'Brien will put that one out of play. But O'Brien believed to have a goal in this game already. Most likely 26 on the season. Again, that's unbelievable for player and defense, but she's dangerous. Yeah, Quaker Town trying to set. Anna Thompson advanced it. Go, Emma. <laughs> Emma Trump on, Emma. gets it, but it's back to the Lady Panthers. And that one is going to go back to Plymouth White Marsh. 7.33 to go in the first half. 3-0 PW. Brooke. 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 The Reverend One American Field Hockey on CITV. It is <laughs> Julia Fiddler. Fiddler gets it back. One on one. Jess Dixon. Back to Fiddler. But Panthers counter. Back to the Lady Colonials. Shell McGrath. Pushes it aside, blocked out of play. PW should get a free opportunity. Again, watch out for Frankie O'Brien. Wants to add on to her total. There's O'Brien. She'll take the opportunity, it goes wide and out of play. Right. 6.35 remaining in the first half. 3 0, Plymouth White Marsh. Once again, I'm 2011 PW alumnus Scott Samuel David White. And that one is out of play, back to the Panthers. Julia Ely again from the sideline. Intercepted by Sophie Coca. Coca will advance it, but that ball will go out of play. Under six minutes to play in the first half. 3-0 PW. Again, two 30-minute halves in regulation. <coughs> and Quaker Town has not scored a goal in three consecutive games. Being outscored 10 to zero in the process. An opportunity for Megan DiGiacomo. And that will go back to the Panthers. OPW once again has already clinched this conference title as that ball is not gonna count. Back to the Panthers. It is believed that DW has dropped maybe two conference games in this four year span with the <laughs> senior class. That's unbelievable. Considering that Wissahickon was the powerhouse for a long time, especially with Katie Bam, who had been Katie O'Donnell. I believe it was from 2003 to 2006. 
Here's Frankie O'Brien. Inside, back to the Pampers. Katie Bam had given the Lady Colonials fits. PW had faced the Bam-led Trojans 10 times, including a District 1 championship game won by Wissahickon. But it has been at least 10 years since PW has last qualified for state postseason action. But district's not a problem. Back to the Lady Panthers, 420 remaining in the first half. 3-0 Plymouth Whitemarsh. Looks like it will be a corner opportunity for the Lady Colonials. No, it's not just a free hit. McGrath, that's a Giacomo actually, got blocked. McGrath in there, confiscates it. Now advancing, here's McGrath, takes it, blocked. Nicely done by defense. For Quakertown with three and a half to play in the first half. Quakertown confiscates it. Nadal. Coca on defense. Pushes it out of play. Still belongs to the Panthers. 3-13 to play in the first half. Still 3-0 PW and no offense so far for the Panthers. Now, back in 2009, which was the only PW season, pa Marianne Paperone did not take her team to the playoffs. PW had a perfect game on defense against Cheltenham. It was a home game. And that was on CITV. PW ball. Advancing past midfield. Melanie Olivieri, who had it, 22 in blue. Jess Dixon can't get up to it. Back to Olivieri, and Olivieri swings it out of play. PW possession, 2.15 we're waiting in the first half on the senior night under the lights. 3-0 PW, blocked, Dixon, blocked. Dixon again, short, puts it through on the side of the cage and it will go back to the Panthers with under two minutes to play. Quaker Town possession. Intercepted again by the Lady Colonials. Back to the Panthers. Ely cannot control it. PW possession, but it is back to the Panthers. Back to the Lady Colonials, Jennifer Byrne. Nicely done, and Byrne will take it from the sideline, but it is blocked. She'll block it herself. The Lady Colonials have it, but Ely intercepts. Jess Dixon trying to intercept herself, but can't. Now goes to midfield. Now, it looks like a chance go, for Madison Halley. Under a minute to play in the first half, 3 0 Plymouth Way Marsh. Quaker Town takes the opportunity, and it is no good. Still believed to have no shots on goal, no corners, no free balls. Looks like PW has played a perfect first half on defense so far. 30 seconds to go in the first half. PW up to three. And it will go back to the paper. And we have 20 seconds. Allie. Yes, Frankie. Blocked out of play. That is the first offensive opportunity 
Well, actually, it's not. They just get a free hit, and that is the end of the first half, folks. After 30 minutes of play, Plymouth Way Marsh 3, Quaker Town 0, PW just 30 minutes away from finishing the regular season 14 0 at 0 at Suburban 1 American Play. I'm Scott Samuel David Weiss. We're in halftime, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Plymouth Wayne Morse's Field Hockey Senior Night on CITV. Once again, I'm Scott Samuel David Weiss. We entered the second half now with PW up 3-0. With the second half underway, PW had the possession, but turned it over on the side. Of it. So in the first half, PW had three goals. Corinne Bechtel, second to leave on, have been by Frankie O'Brien. The third to leave have been by Julia Fiddler. The opportunity is pushed aside by Catherine Hopkins. <laughs> and Bo, that's a, another free possession. That's the second free goal. <coughs> of the game so far for the Panthers. They still haven't had a shot on goal. And Panthers in blue, PW in white. And PW has entered this game 15-1-1 overall. A loss coming on October 4th, 3-1 against Haverford and the tie coming early on in the season here against Hensburg. 2-2. Two two. Here's an opportunity. Oh, this looks really good for Sparrow. Oh, Go nicely in, done by the Quaker Town defense. Oh. And that will be Quaker oh, Town ball. That was job well done. Three Panthers had to get in the way of the ball to stop the opportunity. And that's how this game is only 3 to 0. 28 25 remaining in the second half. 3 0 from a white mark. Quaker Town looks to take it away. And now looks to clear against Frankie O'Brien. Yeah, Frankie! Oops, O'Brien on senior night looking to add another one. She takes the shot and it goes off the player and it should be PW ball. Again, the top ranked team in District 1 3A is Unionville. Puts it through. It's good. Boom. Shakalaka. That's Frankie. Looks like Frankie yeah, O'Brien has done it again. Nice, Frankie. Her second of the contest. Maybe oh, her 27th no, of the season. Yeah. It's 4 0 Plymouth White Marsh. No, like, that's goal number four. Uh, 27 40 remaining regulation. PW up now by four. That's a smooth swing of the stick by O'Brien. And PW has now scored, we believe, 81 goals on the season. They have allowed 11. That's 70 more than allowed. Unbelievable. Opportunity for Sam Spera inside, blocked away by the keeper. <coughs> 27 <coughs> minutes remaining in regulation, PW up by four. Again, that's another scoreless half for Quaker Town, having not scored since beating Cheltenham 9 to 0 on October 6th. <laughs> Quaker Town's lone two conference wins have come against Cheltenham. Quaker Town is not fair well in its first year back in Super One American. Sophie Kolka. And that will force a penalty corner for the Lady Colonials. This is going to be very important come District 1 playoff time. Again, Unionville top ranked. The, the two time defending District 1 champion winning it in 2014 and 15. PW beat Unionville in the District 1 playoff game in 2010 in the first round as a 17 seed, 4 to 1. 
against the 16th seeder. There's O'Brien. Pushes aside. She'll take the shot. Boom! Shakalaka! Unbelievable performance right now for Frankie O'Brien. Perhaps her third goal of the game. 25-49 to go in regulation, 5-0 PW, and we have a running clock now because if a team leads by five or more goals, it's the mercy rule. Frankie O'Brien, the assistant Sam Sparrow, believed to be her 28th tally of the season. Again, she has scored in, we believe, 14 straight games. The momentum will have to continue in the playoffs. 5-0 Lady Colonials. PW beat Quakertown in the first meeting this season. 9-0. Now going inside and it's blocked away. And we have 25 minutes left in regulation. 5-0 PW. So five minutes in the second half, already two goals. And the final 30 minutes for the Lady Colonials. Another penalty corner. Brian again could try to score. It, he has both goals in this half, we believe. There's O'Brien. So she'll take the pass to Coca. Coca takes the shot. Wide left. O'Brien's not just a scorer, she is a provider. And that's why she has done very well, and so has the team. 82 goals on the season for the Lady Colonials. Now the Lady Colonials take it back. McGrath. McGrath is going for it, but it is confiscated by the Panthers. 24 minutes remaining in regulation. 5-0, Lady Colonials. Sophie Kolka takes the shot. It is blocked from the side. It should be a free hit for PW. O'Brien will take it. The block by the keeper, and it will go to the Panthers. So now 23:39 remaining in regulation with a running clock. PW up five to zero. O'Brien believed to have a hat trick so far, and believed to have scored 28 times already on the season. Not sure the last time a PW player had over 30. It may have been recently. You know, Megan McCullough had at least one 20 plus goal scoring season. Paige Tott and Laura Mills have also been important scorers. Courtney Connorwell in the past could get on the score sheet. And that will be PW possession. Out of play for the Panthers. O'Brien will let Colby Beckel take it. O'Brien's at midfield right now, so Quaker Town is on the offense. And that will go out of play. And Jennifer Byrne will take care of the swing. Well, here come the Lady Colonials. Inside, here's the shot, and it goes. Outside, out of play. Quakertown possession, 22-14 remaining. And regulation, 5-0 in Plymouth play March. Now, Perrin Bechtel, who started the scoring in this contest. And that's a swing and a miss, and that's going to be a corner due to that. And the Lady Pampers, four players in the goalkeeper in the cage. And that will allow Frankie O'Brien another chance at the top of the key. With 21 43 to go in regulation. It's a running clock due to a five plus goal advantage. O'Brien misses it. Here's the opportunity by Coley Beck. Michelle McGrath goes inside. She'll take the shot. Boom! Shakalaka! Michelle McGrath scores. 21 25 to go. It's now 6 0 from a play mark. Michelle McGrath puts it in the cage. And the route is continuing 
here at Victory Field on this October 18, 2016 Homecoming Week. All the alumni would be very proud of the performance right now. And again, PW looking like a conference champ, and when the final horn sounds, it will be official fourth straight Suburban One American title. And we're finished unbeaten at home right now, I believe, 8-0-1 here at Victory Field. I don't remember the last time they did not have a loss in the regular season at home. So it's been a while, and they've done very well this season. Especially under a new coach, Sharice Haltman. But he has learned from one of the best, Marion Papo, who is at the game tonight as well. Rooting for the Lady Colonials. Coca will take a shot, but not at the attended target. And it goes out of play. 20 minutes remaining in regulation. PW6, Quaker Town 0 in these first 10 minutes of the second half. That's three goals already for the Lady Colonials. Gia Schweitzer. Schweitzer get inside of Dixon. That one's heading towards out of play. Stays in play. One on one, Schweitzer keeps it in play. She'll advance, she'll take a swing. Inside, Kolka. Kobe Bechtel. Kobe Bechtel not near the cage. It's inside, in there, Jess Dixon. Puts it out of play, it'll be quicker tail. Ball. 19-13 remaining regulation, PW up, 6-0. And PW has won four straight entering this one. And that goes inside, just missed. PW, it looked like back on four October for who was going to finish unbeaten. But that lost to Hereford High, three to one. Put a blemish on the record. Again, PW has lost the last four meetings against Harriford, having not beat the Forge since 2011. That was September 17th that year against Harriford. PW made the playoffs that year as a 15 seed against 18 Springport, but lost at the end by a goal in the first round of the playoffs. So 18-19 remaining in regulation, PW 6. Quakertown, 0. Get this one past midfield. Laura McIntyre. Come on, Frankie. Ricky O'Brien has the stick on it. Adriana Alexander inside, and that one will just go out of play. The opportunity was there, but not good enough. O'Brien advanced it. Now it's past midfield. 17-40 remaining in regulation, PW up six. Already having won the conference, Jess Dixon inside. Can't get it. Opportunity is outside for Sam Sparrow. Sparrow looking to get on the board. In the first half, PW had three goals, we believe, by Corinne Bechtel, O'Brien, <coughs> and Julia Fiddler. Second half, we believe two goals from O'Brien, and one from Michelle McGrath. There's O'Brien. Again, O'Brien, we believe, has 28 goals on the campaign and counting. And that one going to belong now to the Panthers. And Quaker Town, the Quaker Town PA, close to Allentown. Previously of Super Bowl One Continental the past eight seasons. That one is confiscated by the Panthers. Looks like Haley, where the Panthers had it. And that one is outside for Schweitzer. And it will go to the Panthers. 13-20 remaining in regulation. It is PW6, 
Quaker Town Zero. Once again, this is 2011 PW alumnus Scott Samuel David Weiss. It's senior night for the field hockey team final regular season game for the Lady Colonials. Hoping to secure one of eight first round spots to the District 1 3A playoff. Of course, the last time the Lady Colonials had a first round play, it backfired, lost two to zero to Hackle Horsham in the second round of 2013. And one regular season loss the whole year. So that was against Harrisburg High. So deja vu, PW hopes it's a better outcome. 13, 1546 rating regulation, 6-0 PW. Now play the town with possession, out of play. Alexander could not keep it in. That's Alexa. <laughs> Alexa <laughs> Yeah. Schweitzer. This is why you like do like four like, Schweitzer will out. take it. Like, with stick. <laughs> Just blocked away. Outside. So this should be Quaker Town possession with about fifteen minutes remaining in regulation. If PW wins this game, there's a possibility two girls' sports finish conference play unbeaten in the same season. Because PW girls volleyball right now is 17 to 0. And conference play, that's out of play. And the Lady Colonials volleyball team has one match to play. So right now, it looks like CITV plans on bringing you at least two PW sports and playoffs. Volleyball and field hockey and football right now rank eight in District 1 6A. And now goes inside, out of play, Quaker Town possession. And football, 16 District 1 6A teams get in. PW has won seven in a row after opening the football season. Week one, 38-23 loss against Savage. And now, Lady Colonials with possession. Kolka takes it. Goes out of play. Back to Quaker Town. So this season, Quaker Town has already allowed 15 goals to the Lady Colonials. PW has now scored, we believe, 83 tallies on the campaign. Still has allowed 11 total. Now inside. Team in blue, Quaker Town gets it. Alexander. Blocked out of play. Blocked out of play by Emma Trump. Beautiful 10 in white. <laughs> Hannon Z. Adamson in the fourth one, but that one is confiscated. Sophie Coca on the attack. Inside, blocked away. O'Brien has it. Frankie going for another one. Blocked away. Push down. O'Brien has it. He shows fire. Blocked again by the Panthers. Inside, boom, Shaka Laka. 7 0 PW with 12 23 remaining. Time out, Quaker Town. And we're getting confirmation on the goal. May have been by Gia Schweitzer. Not, it was another one for Julia Fittler. But anyway, the goal counts. It's 7 0 PW with 12 19 remaining regulation. Timeout, Quaker Town. So again, on this homecoming week, final games and matches of the regular season for all schools. As for PW Boys and Girls Soccer, they are very far out of the 2014 final spots of 2014 district playoffs <laughs> that sport so boys soccer will not make the playoffs for the first time since 2012 while girls soccer for the second straight year will be out of a spot 
Where again, CITV plans on bringing you Suburban One American Football on October 21st, 2016 against Cheltenham. It will be homecoming game. PW entering that one 5-0 and zero in the conference, 7-1 and one overall. If PW wins that game, it will be at least a share of the conference title. It will be PW's first 2013. And, and the Colonials oh, are in that position yeah, in football be because <laughs> they beat <laughs> Upper Dublin. Not like at Upper Dublin this season, 24-21, Upper Dublin's first loss of conference place, <laughs> suffering a 28-23 defeat in PW's 2013 <laughs> And Upper Dublin is a defending District 1 champ in football. But Quakertown has struggled over the years in field hockey, but until this season, Quakertown had won two straight matchups against PW 2015. It was 5 3 Quaker Town to start the regular season 2014. The Panthers won 4 1. PW did win 2013 matchup 2 1. That was the year in which PW finished 17 1 in a regular season and got a free seat for a first round bye before losing to Matt Walshin in the second round of the playoffs 2 0. 2012, Quaker Town won. 7 1 in 2011. PW won that one 7 1. In 2010, in Quaker Town, it was a 1 1 tie. Ashley Guns scored for the Panthers while Megan McCullough had the PW goal. 2009, which was on CITV, it was 2 1 Quaker Town in overtime. 2008, we believe it was a 0 0 draw. And now, Timeout is over. It is Quaker Town possession. 12 15 remaining regulation. PW looking forward to celebrating an undefeated conference season and yet another Suburban One American title. Will be their fourth in a row. And also a home playoff berth, we believe for sure. 12 minutes remaining regulation. 7 0 PW. PW will most likely get a first round bye, but this is based off of their strength of schedule and PW's opponents believe have a losing record overall, so you gotta get as many wins as you can. And that's what PW is doing. And now here come the Lady Colonials on the attack again. Sam Sparrow puts it through and goes against the cage. Quaker Town ball, no good. 11 IT remaining regulation, 7 0 PW, 4 goals. This second half. 84 on the season for PW. PW has scored 73 more goals than allowed. <laughs> PW's lone blemishes a 2 2 tie against Pensbury and a 3 1 loss at Haverford High. Haverford High comes into the October 16th playoff rankings 13th. <laughs> so it could be a danger zone. As it should be. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Ball is in danger zone. There's a possibility Haverford <laughs> PW can meet again in the playoff. But in the playoff. I want to do. Postseason is a whole different story. Frankie O'Brien grabs the ball, so he'll take a free shot. Already. At least three goals for her, we believe. O'Brien will advance it inside. Candy Reardon had it, but it goes against her. Quaker Town possession with about 10 minutes remaining and regulation in on the regular season. Been a fun ride so far for the Lady Colonials. On this senior night and for the whole season, that's PW ball again. Now inside, McGrath looking for her second goal of the game. And now Quaker Town will get possession. Quaker Town hasn't really been known for sports over the past few years. A few appearances in the District 1 4A football playoff. And in 2016 made an appearance in the softball postseason. Inside, Corinne Bechtel blocked. Reardon 
the second effort was that will go to the Panthers. 9-0-5 remaining in regulation. 7-0 PW still a running clock due to a five plus goal and then Quaker Town advancing. Advancing that was Adamson. Intercepted by Kobe Bechtel. Sophie Kolka. Kolka also plays lacrosse. But the victory field probably will be a site of at least one District 1 3 a playoff game. But the past few weeks, PW has stayed in the seventh possession in the 38 team. 3A rankings. Come on, Emma! Again, top eight, get a first round by. Top 24, get in the playoffs, period. Frankie no, O'Brien now advances it close to midfield now, to midfield. Yes, Sam. Sam Sparrow, 8 0 5 remaining regulation. Uh, that one's going to go out of play. It should be quicker down possession. This is Scott S. D. Weiss for CITV, senior night. And it's a part of homecoming week under the lights. Back when Quaker Town had last been a member of Suburban One America, these lights have not yet been installed. So the Colonial School District has done a great job upgrading the Victory Field facilities over the years. Quaker Town with possession again. Quaker Town of blue, PW and white will be Quaker Town's final regular season and final regular season game and conference play. Quaker Town again, three and fourteen overall, two and eleven in conference play. PW entered this one, fifteen one and one, three thirteen zero zero in the conference. Kick away by the keeper. PW will get a hit. And these teams back on September 23rd. It was a 9-0 PW when O'Brien oh. trying to go top shelf. Nicely done by the keeper to block it out. Blocked by the late Colonials there. McGrath. Corinne back goal, but no dice. But definitely one of the bright spots for the keeper of Quaker Town. 627 remaining in regulation. 7-0 from a flight mark against Quaker Town. And it will go to the Panthers. AW has won 24 straight conference games. This would be a 25th consecutive with the win here. Panthers with the win. W counters with the confiscation. Corinne Bechtel. Now that is pushed away. Kennedy Reardon. With the opportunity it goes by the right. Out of play. 540 remaining in the second half. PW7, Quaker Town 0. Quaker Town entered this contest. Three straight shutout losses. And 11. 10 shutout losses overall. This would be number 11 if they can't get on the board. The Panthers, not sure, have a shot on goal. They've had three hits. <laughs> PW goalkeeping had four saves against the Panthers in the other matchup this season. And the Trump had it. Karen Bechtel. On coverage is here from 26, Lily Hanlon. Hanlon has it, they'll take the opportunity wide left. Hanlon doesn't get a lot of opportunities, but that was a promising attempt there. 436 remaining in regulation on the running clock. Still 7-0 PW here at Victory Field, senior night. Now PW gets it back. Colton tried to get it, but she couldn't. 
Alexander cannot get up to it for the Panthers. PW possession. And PW just got to let that one go. Four minutes of meeting. In the regular season for PW and Lady Colonials have the 7-0 advantage. Lady Colonials again. But that one is taken away by the Panthers. But back to the Lady Colonials. Corinne Bechtel. Coco tried to go after it. O'Brien is there just in case. Now, defense will have to set up. Frankie O'Brien gets it. O'Brien, we believe, has three goals in this one. Possibly 28 on the campaign. That one will go to the Pampers. We like to wish a colonial congratulations to Blaze Gravenous of the PW football team for being voted Rally Athlete of the Week by Philadelphia Inquirer on October 9th. He had an interception against Upper Dublin to secure the victory. And now the Lady Colonials is back with it, but that one is going to go back to the Panthers. 2.36 rating in regulation, 7-0. Lady Colonials over the Panthers of Clicker Town. Chloe back off, and that is intercepted. O'Brien, nice stick work. Go get it. O'Brien is definitely ready for postseason ball. Frankie. Now here come the Panthers. Took Becca Musselman. Yeah, that is intercepted again. Lily yeah. yeah. Hanlon. Yeah. It will be possession. Quakertown, Mackenzie Adamson. A minute 53 remaining in regulation and on the regular season. 7 0 PW. It's been a great regular yeah. season for the Lady Colonials, and after this one, we'll have to work very hard to advance <laughs> into District 1 playoffs. In the playoffs, <laughs> six teams are scheduled to Let's advance the state. PW hopes to be one of the squads to compete for not only a district title, but a state uh, title as well. Out of the play, Quicker Town gets that one intercepted. A minute 17 remaining regulation. PW no, no, just no, looking no, to run out the no, clock. No, no, with a minute 10 remaining up seven. Sam! Sam Spera takes it. And that one is kicked away by the keeper for the Panthers. And with a minute remaining regulation, it'll be a free opportunity for the Lady Colonials. There's the opportunity kicked away, but it will be Quaker Town ball with 48 seconds. So Quaker Town will fall. The three and 15 overall, two and 12 in the conference. PW will finish the regular season 16-1-1 and perfect 14-0 and zero in conference play, and will officially clinch a fourth straight Super One American title. 22 seconds left. The LA Colonials, for good measure, maybe one more in the works. PW gets it, Coley Bechtel for 10 seconds. An opportunity here by Colton, no good, five seconds. And that's it, it's over. The Plymouth Flamers Lady Colonials are the 2016 Suburban One League American Conference Champions of field hockey. Winning senior night by a score of seven to zero against Quaker Town. Finishing the regular season 16-1-1 overall. And have now won 25 straight conference games. And look, and look here, the Lady Colonials are ready and bound for another postseason run. So on senior night, we believe Frankie O'Brien had scored three goals. She had played a huge part in the win as the Lady Colonials look to not only get in the playoffs, but get a first round bye. 
So that's another edition of GITV Sports. I'm 2011 Plymouth Way Marshall alumnus Scott Samuel David Weiss. We hope you enjoy this one. And we thank you for watching.